In this video, I'm going to talk about five Python tricks that will make your life easier. You might be a professional Python developer, but you are probably using third-party libraries mostly. Although these libraries are very important, it's also very important to have comprehensive understanding of base Python. So in this lecture, I will go over five simple Python tricks that I think will make your scripts more efficient and appealing. So let's get started. So the first one is fString, which is the nearest string interpolation method in Python. By using fstrings, we can place values of variables in a string. So let's say I have a variable like this, which is name. So I'm just going to put my name over here, Ershad. So let's say you want to print out to the console by using this variable inside print statement. So before we were using it like this, print, and we were using some concatenations. So I'm just going to put, for example, hello with space then plus name. So we are going to print out hello Ershad to the console. Now, by using fString, we can make our life much more easier. So to use fString, we are going to put f in front of this string over here. Then we are just going to put everything inside quotes. So here we are just going to put curly braces and put the variable that we want to use. So then if I run our code, you will see that in this case, it's printing out the same thing in easier way. And fstrings is highly flexible method. Consider we are having placing the very large number in f. So let's say you want to print out something like this. So instead of this hello name over here, I'm just going to put something like the value of the company is, so let's put some number over here. So I'm just going to declare the number here. So let's put very long number like this. Now, if I print out this value, you'll see that's going to print out something like this. Now it might be easier to read this value, the long value with thousand separators. So you can easily do this modification in the F string. So if I put something like this, so after number, I'm just going to put colon, then comma, then let's put D. So in this case, it's, it's going to print out with thousand separators over here. So this make our life easier to read this number very easy by using F string. And inside F string, we can use formatting like this. Now, the second trick that I'm going to share with you is to convert list to the string. So let's say we have a list of names like this. So I'm just going to put names. So let's see, we have a custom list like this. So I'm just going to put custom list. So in this list, we have some programming language names. So let's just put Java, then Python, so then Swift and Kotlin. So if you want to combine all the items in this list in a single string, there are many options for solving this task. For instance, you can iterate over the list in a for loop and add all these strings into a one single string. So we can create it like this. My string is equal to, so I'm just going to create empty string. Then inside loop for word in custom list, we can just combine everything to this my string over here. So it's going to be like this word. Then I'm just going to put space after each of them. Then at the end, we can print out the word to the console. So it's going to be like, this. so if I just print out my string to the console, you'll see that in this case, it is just combined all these list items into a string over here. Now, this is one of the way of doing this, but this is not optimum solution because in Python, we have very easier way of doing this. So we can use join function for this. So instead of writing all this code over here, I'm just going to comment out this one. We can write just join function like this. So I'm going to straight away print it to the console. So we can put space, empty string over here, then put join. Then inside this function, we can pass custom list as a parameter. So I'm just going to pass it like this. So as you can see, it's going to print out same thing to the console. So we have spaces between these items over here because we have put space over here. Now we can put different character. Let's put dash. So if I read on it, you'll see that between these items over here, we have dash. So this code over here can be done with the single line of code over here in Python. Now the third trick that I'm going to share with you is find most frequent one. So let's say we have a string like this. So I'm just going to put my string is equal to, we have a, 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 b, 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 something like this. So we want to find the most frequent character in this string over here. So how can we do that? So one way of doing this, we can do it by using collection library. So from collection, if I import counter, then by using counter, we can find out the most frequent character in this string over here. So we can put it like this. So I'm just going to create a new variable. So here we can call counter. So we can put inside my string. Then I'm just going to print out this one to the console. Now if I run our code, so here we have to put collections. 
So if I run our code, you will see that it's just going to count the number of characters that is appearing in this string over here. So A is appeared six times and B is appeared five times. So to find the most frequent one, all we have to do inside this print statement, I'm just going to put most common. So if I put one over here, it's going to print out the one which is most frequent. But here, as you can see, we are using library, but we can find it very easily by using built-in max function in Python. So we know that the max function returns the maximum number in the list or the last character in the alphabet if you are using it with the string. So in this case, let me just comment out this part. If I use maximum function like this, it's going to print out most, most frequent character in this string over here. I'm going to put max, then the string. Then here, I'm going to put second argument, which will be key is equal to, we can put my string dot count. So in this case, before we know that A is repeated every six times, so if I run our code, you will see that it's just going to print out A. Now in this case, it's not printing out anything because we have not printed out it to the console. So if I just print out this expression to the console, you will see that in this case, it's printing out A. So this means that A is the most repetitive element in this string over here. Now we can use max function with the list also. So let's say we have custom list like this. So let me put list. So I'm just going to put the elements over here like this. A, A, one more time, A, let me just put B. So we have three A's over here and two B's. So if I run maximum function with this list, one more time with the key equals my list dot count. In this case also, it's going to print out most, most frequent element in this list over here. So if I run our code, you will see that it's printing out A one more time. So this uppercase A, is the most repetitive element in this list over here. Now the fourth trick is about randomness, which is a fundamental concept in data science. We will not be going in detail about randomness here. However, we will see a quick method to pick up a random item from a list. Now the built-in random model of Python has several functions and methods. One of them is choice method can be used for selecting a random element from indexable collection. So let's say one more time we have a list like so I'm just going to delete everything from here and create a list, my list. So in this case, here again, I'm just going to put the name of programming language. Now, if you want to select a random programming language name from this list, we can use random choice function. So in this case, first I have to import random, random model. Then I can put it like this, random dot choice. So here as a parameter, we can pass this list. So if I run our code, so here again, I need to print out this one to the console. So if I run our code, you'll see that in this case, it's printing out three. Now, if I run it one more time, every time it's printing out different result to the console. So it's selecting the random element among this list over here. Now we can use this random choice function with tuple, but we cannot use it with sets because set object is not scriptable. Now the fifth trick is about dictionary. A dictionary is one of the most commonly used data structures in Python. It consists of key value pairs. The keys in a dictionary are unique, so we can use them to access the values easily. For instance, a dictionary is a great fit to store the age of people. Okay, in this case, names might be the repetitive because more than one person can have the same name. So, however, in real life scenario, we can assign a unique ID to each person and use these numbers as dictionary. So for simplicity, I'm just going to use names over here. So let's say we have two lists like this. So the first one is names. So in this first list, I'm going to put some names. So let's put Eddie, Reddy. So let's put Jane, John. And in the second list, we have their age. So I'm going to put it like this. For example, 20, 22, 24, and 25. Now, if you want to combine these two lists, in a dictionary by using value pair, you can use something like this. So here I can put my dictionary is equal to, we can use dict function, then we can pass it something like this, zip, names, and age. So here it has to be age. Now then if I print out the dictionary to the console, you will see that it has created a dictionary based on these two lists over here. So here, zip function create tuples of pairs and then with dict function we are just creating a dictionary so to see how zip function works we can write something like this for pair in zip 
I'm going to put names and age, then we can print out pair. So if I run our code, you will see that it's going to print out each pair one by one over here. So it's creating tuples of pairs. So this is how we can convert two lists into a dictionary with the value and pairs. So in the first one, we are going to have the keys and in the second one, we are going to have values. So with this, we have come to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, I have explained five very simple Python tricks which can make your life much more easier. So if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit thumbs up button. So see you in the next videos.